Hello everyone, uh, once again, welcome to this amazing session. My name is Wanjiko. I am a front-end developer and uh, the founder of Ladies of Lux. Um, so today uh, we are going to tackle uh, uh, what is uh, front-end development all about? How do you get started with your journey? How do you uh, get to climb up the career ladder? How do you enhance the process of learning? Yeah, so we are going to talk about that. And uh, the other thing I'd like to congratulate you guys. Um, congratulations for making it this far and for joining this boot camp. Uh, this boot camp is uh, basically geared toward front end development and it's a collaboration or a partnership uh, between Ladies of Lux and uh, Microsoft Evolve. Yeah, so I will briefly talk about Ladies of Lux, how Ladies of Lux came into existence. Yeah, so I remember last year when we, when we founded Lux Academy, and everything was moving on so well in terms of the boot camps that you used to have, project-based learning. And we realized that there was a gap in the tech industry. And we felt that uh, there was need to create another community that will empower women in tech. And that is how Ladies of Lux came into existence. And our main aim is to advance gender equality and shared uh, prosperity of women in the tech ecosystem yeah so um, kindly feel free to join our community you can follow us on twitter where we we post things to do with technology and any upcoming boot camps uh that we have um <clears throat> oh, okay so uh, this is going to be an onboarding se uh, se session of what will you be required to do throughout uh uh, the boot camp and uh, I'll just read a guideline of what you'll be required to do as a learner and uh, one of the things that we have in place is that we'll be having two classes on a weekly basis and uh, the classes will be starting at 8, 8 p.m. Yeah, so kindly uh, purpose to attend those classes uh, and the other thing uh, during those classes we are going to cover different topics. Uh, for example, we will start with the introduction to HTML, CSS, then proceed to Git and GitHub, then move to ES6 and then React. So the classes will be so amazing. And then the other thing that you'll be expected to do as a learner, uh, you'll be required to write two articles in a week. Okay, that is the minimum requirement, though you can always write more you can always write if there's one thing as lux academy that you always try to promote is technical writing yeah so that will be one of the requirements um and then the other thing um you'll also be required to implement uh small projects in between the week and i believe project-based learning is the best way that you could actually accelerate your learning process as a developer so that will be the other uh, requirement and last but not least there will be a final capstone project here yeah, towards the end of the boot camp yeah so that's it from me and uh kindly feel free this is going to be a very amazing session we have an amazing speaker on board he's amazing he speaks a lot of you know javascript um so kindly feel free in case you have any question drop it on the chat forum or you can just unmute and ask uh, okay see so someone is asking about a slack channel yes um we have a slack channel i'll share the link shortly yeah kindly feel free to join and one word for me is that the world is your oyster you can achieve anything that you'd want to achieve um okay so i will introduce our speaker um so our speaker who's going to grace this occasion is abel abel masila he writes a lot of javascript um so i'll do a brief introduction about abel um so abel is an end-to-end -end product developer he's a full stack engineer at x2 ai with over six years of experience in the tech industry 
he's also uh, fearlessly uh, passionate about uh, the user experience and uh, the introduction of a product. And those of you who are part of the React Devs community, Abel is the founder and he's also a technical speaker. So without further ado, I can see that his camera is on. <laughs> hi, Abel. Hi, hi, Mary. Hi, guys. So uh, it's great to be here. I am doing this call from, from my car, so I'll be turning off uh, the camera shortly when we start okay. the demo. Uh, just for just to avoid distractions here and there. Yeah, uh, thanks for the intro. <laughs> okay, it's good to see you. Okay, ah, so <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that Abel is going to take us through um what is project based learning all about. How do you implement a project from scratch, and how do you get to like navigate through the whole system? Is going to take us through that. So I'll hand over the session to to Abel. Abel, you can pick it up from there. Yeah, so thank you, Mary, once again, and uh, welcome all of you to this session. It's going to be amazing. Uh, you're going to learn something. I'm also going to learn something uh, uh, by interacting with you. Uh, so as Maria said, I am Abel Masila. I have been doing software development for, for quite some time. Uh, and I started out as a, a Microsoft C Sharp developer back in the day, back in 2015. Then I changed, I stopped doing all that stuff. I started doing uh, JavaScript and doing UIs and amazing stuff in the JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, and um, if I can uh, 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 give a brief uh, uh, review of, of uh, things I've worked on and places I've worked in, uh, companies I've worked for. So I, I said I started as a .NET engineer, so I used to work for a company in uh, uh, around Hallingham, Software Dynamics. Uh, it's a great company. We did a lot of ERPs there. Then I left. I worked on a different system for Tanzania for import, marine import and stuff. That was my first big React project, and it was full of learning and uh, experience was quite good. And then I worked for MOOC Africa. I built MOOC.com, where MOOC.com is a platform for selling tickets and streaming music. Right now, they are on, on, on hold because of the COVID system, so they can't do events and all that stuff. So the company is on a breeze right now. But I did do that. Then I joined Andela. I worked uh, for Andela for uh, one year uh, through, uh, for X2AI through Andela. Then X2AI hired me full time, so I left Andela. And that's where I am right now. At X2AI, I am a front-end engineer. I'm also, I also double up as a mobile engineer and also a back-end engineer. So I do all, all this crazy stuff. You got to do what you, are, what you have to do for the money. Uh, and it's quite amazing. Uh, I love to challenge myself uh, in, with, this, or with these new technologies and stuff. So X2AI is a company which offers psychological and mental health care through bots. We have custom bots. We also have uh, uh, messages, uh, message bots, and messenger bots for Facebook. It's, it's been amazing. Uh, the company has, is no longer a startup. They have uh, they, they, are, they have reached their uh, break-even point, so they are profitable company. And I'm happy to be part of the team, which is helping people out there. X2AI had a program in Kenya for which was helping with uh, postpartum de depression for. Uh, new moms, and uh, I think the program was shut down after, after some time, but it was amazing. So, uh, of course, uh, we are looking forward to having it back in Kenya. So, let me let me open up, uh, let me share my screen, uh, and then we'll see. Uh, okay, hopefully you can see my slides, right? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. So we're going to talk about uh, quite a lot of stuff today. Uh, and since these are, these are, this is an, an onboarding call to a bootcamp, uh, I, I can assume that you are all ready to learn JavaScript and React and web development and UI, UI, UI engineering and all that stuff. So my introduction has been simple. I have a GitHub account, Abel Dash Masila. You can always check in there. I have lots of projects there. You can you can see how I've grown 
from my C sharp journey to my React. I also do Vue.js, I also do Svelte.js. I do so many things, I also do Python. Uh, I also do Swift. Uh, so you can open it to my GitHub and uh, see what's happening there. So today we are going to start with one topic and then we go to the next one. So we are going to talk about how you, how you are going to advance from a beginner to a pro in React. And when I say React, I don't really mean that you are, you can only develop in React uh, after this session or after the bootcamp. You can always uh, switch on to another framework because this talk is going to show you how you grow from uh, zero to pro or from intermediate to pro uh, or something like that. So, uh, so many developers or just beginners uh, learn the, fu the fundamental concepts and they don't implement this concept. Uh, and that is where Mary said that we, you are going to take on a project at some, at some point in the bootcamp. And that is great to hear. So, uh, so uh, we have categories on the type of projects, uh, each level of, of, of React engineering uh, lies. We have beginner projects, we have intermediate projects, and we have uh, advanced projects. The beginner projects basically focus on React basics and we'll see what, what are the important React basics. And then the intermediate ones, they go beyond uh, uh, the basics and also see what is beyond the basics. The advanced one now, since you have mastered React, you focus on other things around React, the ecosystem, optimization, and then you keep on iterating uh, because the, the journey is endless. You cannot say that you have reached the end and you don't want to do any, any other thing about React. So for the beginner React projects, uh, first and foremost, I usually emphasize on people learning JavaScript, like just JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is very important because uh, in the documentation for React, they say React is a JavaScript uh, library for UIs. So JavaScript is the key word there. Can you understand some core concepts of JavaScript? I've heard that Mary says that, say that you're going to take on ES6. ES6 is the building a, a block for most of the React concepts. Of course, we have now ES8, we have all these new, all these newer ECMAScript specifications, but it's good to understand JavaScript. And some of the concepts about JavaScript you need to master very well. Uh, some include asynchronous JavaScript, that is very important. We also have callbacks and, and uh, promises and uh, async await, you need to understand those concepts as pertains to uh, asynchronous JavaScript. We also have other concepts like classes and functions, also variables, like variables, people don't don't think that variables is overrated, but in JavaScript, variables are treated differently, depending on how you are going to declare them. We have something called, called hoisting in JavaScript, where a variable can be declared at the bottom or at the top, it's still going to appear uh, at the middle of the uh, of your code block. So those concepts, so you need to, to also understand the basics of JavaScript, uh, the DOM, the DOM, uh, the DOM methods, the query selectors, all those nice stuff. Of course, you're not going to use them, but it's good to know what they do because React is just going to encapsulate all that logic into simple APIs. So now for the React part, we have a couple of uh, concepts for beginner. And one is well, one of them is uh, right now. Uh, right now we we have Java. We have React. I think seventeen point eight. I think we are going to React eighteen soon. I think on the twelfth of December. So check on check out check out on on the demo. I think they are going to do the demo on the twelfth of December. If I'm not wrong, they are going to introduce React eighteen. That is seventeen. Yeah, that, that, that is React eighteen. So React seventeen is it right now? They introduce something called React hooks. These basically hooks, they help you uh, write functional components, which look nice. I'll show you a couple of them. Before functional components, we are writing class components. And uh, uh, you, if you have been doing JavaScript for some time, you know that classes in JavaScript are simply functions. They're just some functions which look good. So you need to understand uh, one of the hook, which is called use state. Use state is basically for state management, setting and updating your state. Use effect is for dispatching effects like calling your APIs, doing stuff when, when the UI changes, all that stuff. You do it in the use effect hook. We have something. We have some other concepts like props. Uh, props are basically properties to your components. And uh, for instance, a prop 
to a component would let's say you have an input component a prop to that could be on change the value uh, to the input uh the label it's a prop all that stuff you need to understand what props are also we also we have the concept of prop validation using prop type prop types is prop types is a package i'll show you on uh, npm which helps you with that also have to talk about styling so in react you can just write raw css you can write less you can write sas if you want to of course uh, we have the core system around react where we have a library called the style component we also have one called the emotion js where you can write your styles and represent them as components and it looks so nice i'll show you all that stuff you also need to understand forms yeah forms are very complicated like people want to write what forms uh, are meant to do and they get it wrong uh i myself have struggled so many times trying to come up with a perfectly working form in a in a complex complex application so you need to understand forms the events for the forms on submit you need to, to understand concepts on, on change the on change events for the inputs the 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 the, the props to disable inputs and keep them in uh, forecast all that stuff then you have JSX, and JSX is JavaScript uh, 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 XML in uh, XML. So whereby instead of writing .html file, you write .js or .jsx files. So basically, a representation of your HTML in a JavaScript file. So we'll also we we'll also look at that in a demo or something. So once you have understood those basics, you need to take your time and practice on a project. And one of the famous projects on GitHub or on YouTube is a to do app. You can just always Google React to do app or whether API to uh, whether API application or a simple counter or a simple calculator. These applications um, will help you utilize this this stuff which you've learned, the hooks and the props and some of the CSS, and you also get to understand JSX very well. Uh, at this point, I want to open the React documentations just to show you what this looks like in the documentation. Right now, we have. Uh, you can always go to React.org. React.org is the is the main website. They are working on uh, on making this look better. So I'm at the beta uh, version of the new website, which is going to be launched, I think, uh, towards the end of the year. And uh, this a basic component. Like we have two components here. We have one component with this a function called greeting. Of course, you have to obey all the rules of classes uh naming or the the, com the components starts with a capital letter and then you can come up with a component which just renders jsx this is the jsx part is an h1 which just renders hello and a, and a prop which is going to be passed code name so when so when this when, when this component is rendered in another let's say in a different scope like we have another another app component which can render the virtual component it takes on a prop code name uh with a value like Sarah Taylor. So when this runs, it's going to show hello uh, uh Davish, hello Sarah, hello, hello Taylor. So these are simple, simple components. These are simple components you can do, which you can, you can come up with. And uh, as you will see when you scroll down these 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 guides, they are amazing. They have the outputs next to them. Uh, you get to see the prof the, 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 the different ways of handling data and all the stuff. So always check on this. Uh, let me send the link on the chat. That's the first that's the first uh, that's the first thing which you need uh, to visit. I see somebody saying that they can't hear a thing. I are you are you able to hear? Um yes, you're audible on my end. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, if if you have a problem with the uh, with the audio, you can always leave the meeting and then come back in. I think that is a way of fixing it. So now that you have taken the basics of React, uh, you are you have chosen to work on a, on a couple of these projects. Uh, you can choose one. You don't need to work on all of them. Depending on your interests, you can just choose one and and work on it. Once you have worked on that. Keep on iterating, keep on taking on new new projects. Basically, you can even come up with your own uh, profile, like a portfolio website, build it, style it well. Uh, it's, going to, it's going to help you. Then uh, after after some time you have you have you have worked on React and you feel like you are you want to go to the next level. 
the intermediate level, the mid level. So first of all, you need to appreciate yourself that you've been consistent and you are now on the intermediate level path. You have stayed with React, you have not given up, uh, nothing has scared you because some people get scared and they stop learning. So you need to be, you need to pat yourself on the on the shoulder and yes, feel good about yourself. So now at the intermediate level, uh, I think it's get a little bit complicated because these are these are applications which which you can share with your friends. They are usable. Uh, they have value. Like unlike the to do app. You see that you do it cannot really help a lot, or the calculator app, because we all, we, all, we all have these applications in our phones. So, at the limited level, uh, you need to understand something called state management and life cycle hooks of your components. State management in React is a buzzword because the ecosystem to state management is bloated with so many libraries, but it's a simple concept. So, what is state? State is the current data of your component. For instance, let's say you are working on a form, a form which submits your, uh, your login info. Once you fill the, the, the email and the password, the email and the password become the state of that component, and then you can use it where, 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 and do whatever you want to do, calculations, submit to a, to a backend, all that stuff. So state man management is the simplest way to do state management is using the use, use state hook, which is the def the de facto state management tool in react but as things the things grow you, you your applications grows a little bit more and your state becomes a little bit huge for instance if you are working on your on your resume app builder or builder app you see how much so you need a way of uh, managing all that data in a uniform way and that's where things like context API, which is built in, into React, comes into play. So you hear people talking about context API. It's very simple, like it's the simplest thing to do. People just uh, uh, tend to scare people about state management, but the simplest thing you can learn is context API. It works so well and it's built into React. So you don't need to install uh, to install a package for, for it to work. So you, you always check on context API. We have another hook which is built into React called use reducer. Can help you come up with the redu reducer functions. You are going to learn what reducer functions are. And then you, uh, as we have talked about components, components have a life cycle. For instance, when the component has been mounted, is unmounting, is is uh, rendering, is being destroyed. All all that is the life cycle of a component, and uh, you need to understand the. Uh, what your or what stage uh, of the set of life of the life cycle is uh, your component is at all the time and what you need to do before we had functional components and hooks people used to write class components i've said and those these life cycle hooks were built in a way they were so clear like we have a hook called component inbound com component did update component uh, uh, com component uh, uh, did update all this stuff they are there for classes but now for hooks you use the use effect which is basically handles the changes like any effect you can use the use effect uh, hook to do the life cycle management for that so once you have understood uh, the concept of statement management and life cycle hooks so it's time to build something uh, a blog application is a good place to start you have so many youtube tutorials on this and people are going even the extra mile to show you how to build the back end for this they show you how to do a node back end for your blog application or your scoreboard application or your management application or your resume resume build application so people are always willing to show you how to do this stuff you need to be keen on on the kind of project you, you pick at this point because you're going to hear buzzwords like redux redux saga uh, you are going to hear things like um uh, we have another one which has been produced recently uh, to do to do state management by react team you're going to hear so many things about it just focus on the simplest thing people are talking about context api they are the people you want to hear more and people are talking about Redux because Redux is an advanced concept, is an as an advanced uh, uh, concept, as good as advanced concept, which you may not need at this stage. But they are there if you need them, but you you may not need them at this stage. 
even in the React documentation, they usually say that. Uh, if you don't feel the need of using Redux, don't do it. There will come a time when you will find out that, that a new Redux, and then the, that is the perfect time to start using Redux. Until then, just ignore it, use Context API. Uh, just do simple state management. Don't bloat your application. Uh, you are an intermediate developer, you are looking for information, and there's a lot of information at this level or the mid level. So be keen on the kind of content you're going to consume because at this point, people tend to even give up on React because of Redux. And uh, why people tend to do that is because Redux, Redux the, the paradigm followed by Redux is not so common to developers because there is functional programming uh, 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 paradigms in there. So if you have been programming using OOP, you find it hard to to do like to like yeah that state cannot be mutated. Uh, you go you are going to hear things like reducer functions. You are going to hear things like spread operator or oh, lots of stuff. So you, you you need to be careful because the Redux spreading is going to change your perspective on OOP because it's functional programming. So don't be afraid to jump into that if you want to, but just to know that it's going to be so different to you until you get the gist. So don't be scared about that. You are an intermediate. You're already solving complex problems. Then um, after some time, yeah, you are. You feel like, yeah, I'm doing good. And uh, you are always conquering React at this point. And you can see my emojis there because React is so wide, you can never conquer it, but you're almost there. Like, you are a productive person. Yeah, let me say that. You can be hired, you can you can do stuff, you can create valuable applications. You are almost there. So at this stage now, you have learned so many things. You have made applications, the blog applications, which I've told you, the management. You have even talked about state management. At this point is when you realize that your applications are not you are not very fast because there are some concepts which you do not cover at the deep level. Here, you are going to focus on scalability and optimization. When you're working on this application now, don't think of just components and uh, it working. Look at the future, like the future of this application. Where can it, how far can it go? What other things can we add in the near future? And implement the project using that approach. And uh, you're going to be able to write maintainable code because at this point, some people are working with you. You're not working alone. So some people are working with you and you are, they are seeing your code. So you need to write good code, code which a developer can jump into and uh, start adding value. And uh, you also need to deal with scalability. For instance, uh, um, when you're working on an application, there's something which, which people tend to of a look, the folder structure, for instance, the folder structure. Where do I put my complete container uh, components? Where do I put my common components? Where do I put my presentational components? Where do I put my utilities? Where do I put my logic? Where do I put things to do with routing? Those are decisions which you are, which you are going to make at the pro level now, at the advanced level, because it's going to be dependent the 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 future of the project is going to be dependent on this on this simple simple yet important decisions which you are going to make at this level so here is where you go to look at the different types of components you go you are going to hear presentational components container components you are going to hear things like um the style guides like right now we have a style guide for airbnb airbnb is a very big is a very big player in the react ecosystem they have written a style guide on it's not like something which you need to follow all the time, but it's good. Like, let me show you the style guide, which, which I'm talking about. Airbnb, uh, React, style guide. It's, it's amazing. Like, they show you things which you can which can, which can, which can borrow from the experience, like basic rules, classes, uh, quotes, like things like this. So if you are doing uh, um, quotes, uh, single quotes, double quotes, we are going to have things like spacing, how to pass props, this is bad, this is good, you see? They are going to show you what is good, what is bad. And uh, let me see if they have a folder structure one, if I'm not wrong. Uh, basic rules like, uh, yeah, like this is bad, this is good. So these are style guide. It shows you what the industry, um, what, the, what the big players have decided to use. 
So at this point, you are going to make decisions like this. Am I going to, am I going to do this? Or am I going to do this? Because the project is dependent on that this kind of decision. And here you're going to hear uh, a lot of other packages which you need to learn, like web webpack. Webpack is something which you need to learn at this level because webpack is a big layer for in in, in the optimization uh, of your application because by default the tooling which we have for react they have they have bundled all the webpack in a script called the react scripts so at this point when you when you want to do optimizations you have to write your custom webpack rules uh, which fit your application so always uh, be open to exploring web webpack we also have other bundlers. So Webpack is a is a packet is a packet bundler. We also have others. Uh, uh, others like ESB, ES Build. It's one of them. We also have Parcel. All these are uh, bundlers. So you, you you need to check on them. Uh, uh, you're also going to hear things like Babel at this stage. Where Babel is a transpiler. Things like that. How the difference between ES5, ES6 code. This at this level you are doing crazy stuff, and it's very important to keep your mind sane. At this point, you're also going to hear a lot of Redux because it's things uh, which have already done their own setup and they have their Redux already set up. So you're also going to write custom hooks, like apart from use state, use effect, you're also going to come up with your own custom hooks. And then yeah, there are some of the compo uh, of the projects you can check on at this stage, like an e-commerce platform. You see, an e-commerce platform is a perfect, uh, project to take on at an advanced level because you are going to learn advanced state management, optimization, a lot of styling, and uh, even you are going to know how to host, how to integrate with backend for for making the orders, all this stuff. This is the point you also get to, to know about M-Pesa if, if you are interested in, in working with M-Pesa. So pick a project, go with it. So um, uh, before I wrap up on this topic, I would like to say that after you have conquered React, as I've said before, please keep on con be consistent with your journey. Keep on learning. Uh, right now, I would say I've done React for quite some time now, but you'll, you'll find myself looking at new stuff to do with React. You ask me why. Because the journey is endless and the the way we used to solve problems back in the day has changed and people have come up with better ways to do it so it's always good to keep on learning so don't say that you have learned enough so at this point i want to show you uh i'll show you a couple of projects in my github uh, account which are basic and they work so let me just get one uh, I have so many projects. Uh, huh. so this, this is a project which I did when I was starting out with uh, React. You see, this one is four years ago. It's a, you see, the initial commit is four years ago, four years ago. That means I'm very old. So, <laughs> so if I open on the client folder, you can see the, I talked about uh, folder structure. So I'm using Redux for this project. So I have my actions there, I have my reducers there, I have my utility functions there, I have my images there, I have my components which are common there, and some of them are pages, and I also have a validation um, uh, uh, folder where I'm doing validations uh, for my application. So if I can open for instance, a simple a simple page like the login page, so this, these days we were using class components, as you can see class extends login, so we have the constructor. If you have done Java, you know what a constructor is. The first is a the function is a function which gets invoked when the when the uh, the, the class is instantiated for the first time. So that's a constructor. And then we have the hooks, component did mount. These ones are old stuff. Component will receive props uh, and all that stuff. So these these are good example of how you can do forms. For instance, you can see I have forms here. I have a custom component called the text field group. So you can see all the props I pass in. These are the props. And I also have something to do with prop validation. This, this one is this is called prop validation. So um, the out prop is going to be an object, prop.object, prop, object, it's going to be required. So you cannot 
you cannot uh, ignore it. It's, going, it's not going to break the application, but it's going to show an error in the console of your of your Chrome browser. Uh, so these are some of the stuff um, you can check on. On uh, this one is an old project, so if you want to check on uh, check on uh, class components, uh, let me share. Let me share. Let me share that. Uh, so let's look on uh, our project where I'm using hooks now. Uh, fast forward years later, where I'm using hooks. Mm -hmm. Let me see, let me see, let me see. You see, I also do view, I'll do a lot of view. Uh, this one is TypeScript. Do I have anything here? Um, upload to six. Ah, this one is an old one. This one is 2020. Mm. Right now, all the projects which I do, I write them using hooks. So uh, this one is a React Native project. So you can always check in there. Yeah. Uh, like this timeline component. This one should have hooks. The component, the timeline. Oh, uh, a second. Pablo.js. Oh, good. Index.js. Good. Ah, uh, okay. This one does not have, does not have hooks to. Mm -hmm. oh, let me show you my projects for a company. Uh, not this one. Mm -hmm. Let me check on this. Uh, this is a project uh, which has got hooks, I believe so. So you see a different folder structure, assets, components, containers. This is where, we have, where, where you have the, your context, your context API stuff. So you can always always implement the way you want. Um, but let's check on the components. Let's check on uh, a specific component like a form component. Yeah, so this one is using style component. So you can always... Uh, Check on style component. Style component is a is a, is a styling uh, library. Styled components. If you are doing React, you are going to hear a lot of styled components out here. So if you are, if you want to build a component called button, you can style an anchor an anchor tag with all the styles which you want, and then you can implement it like this. So this is a this is a styled component which is a an anchor, uh, and then it's going to be a button that's a name and then you can render it as a as a normal component so you can always say check on styled component um, it's amazing uh -huh. so now that now that we have we have checked on that um let's go to the next uh, next topic which is react based now learning and uh i want uh, I, I want to to explain why it's important to learn by doing and uh, one of the things which people tend to fall into is something called uh, tutorial hell. without using a tutorial you are always stuck on tutorials you want to build the next project you go for a tutorial you want to build this but you go for a tutorial. you have no confidence whatsoever to work on a project without the help of tutorials react based learning helps you avoid and get away from tutorial hell and i know senior developers mid-level engineers out there who are still stuck in tutorial hell like these are people who are always buying courses, buying courses, buying courses for the same things which they already do or which they know. So please, please, as you're working into this bootcamp, being confident in yourself and take on projects. Don't Google, don't go for easy projects. I've seen now we have some guys on YouTube, they're called Clever Programmer. They are cloning all the applications. They have cloned Airbnb, they have cloned um, Uber, they have cloned netflix hulu if you watch all those tutorials you are doing a very bad thing just watch one that's enough 
don't watch all of them implementing their clones. You are going to stuck there, to get stuck there. These are four hours to five hours uh, kind of long uh, videos. So imagine you spending four hours every day watching tutorials of things which you know. Just watch one, know how these guys are solving the, 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 the problems. That's it. Don't get stuck. Please, please. Also, while you are solving problems, you also end up learning something which is very important debugging and looking for solutions. When I was starting out, I, I, I know it's, it's something which is common and people don't talk about it. You feel like you're not sufficient enough. You can't solve this problem enough. And when you get to a bug, you feel helpless. Like you have worked on a component, it's, we have a bug. You feel helpless to stop working on it. That, at that point, that is, a, that is a time you need to start Googling, inspecting your console, asking for help, call people, let people join in you on a call to help you debug that problem. Because the moment you start feeling helpless, you're not coming up with a solution. And when companies are employing people, basically what, what software engineers is, do is work on a feature, fix bugs. Work on a feature, fix bugs. So fixing bugs is very important. And you can only get the expertise by working on projects. And it's important for you to know how to debug. I show you some techniques on how to debug. My interview, when I was interviewing for Andela, uh, the technical interview call, I was given a simple, uh, a simple uh, program to implement. They were not even looking for the solution to work or the correctness. They just wanted to, how I'm going to know how I'm going to debug it. Like, how are you going to approach the problem? Are you going to give, to stay helpless? Are you going to ask for help? Are you going to oh, to inspect the console? I'm going to, to try something. I'm going to, to, to check on Stack Overflow, things like that. You only get that by practicing. The beauty of building uh, things by yourself is that you identify weaknesses in your own ability to address them. So right now, people don't talk about it. CSS is very complicated. Once you, you come to terms that I don't know CSS well enough, you start improving your CSS skills. You can always learn and iterate and iterate. CSS is very complicated. And like 80% of your front end work is going to is going to test your CSS skills because a designer is going to give you a template, a Figma template. It, they, it's very complicated. They have they have animations, they have all these slides, but you cannot implement them using CSS. Of course, you know very good JavaScript, but then you cannot always write everything in JavaScript. You need some CSS at some point understanding and your weaknesses. For instance, I know for myself, I'm always learning CSS because I end up getting stuck uh, in doing small things and I keep on learning CSS. Right now, if I tell you to build a card component, write, write uh, of your mind without Google. Some people will do it, do it perfectly without worries. Some people will get stuck on the right CSS to write. So, you keep on improving on, on your weaknesses. It allows you to grow much quicker since you are concentrated on the effort in areas which you need most. So as, as the bootcamp is going to start, already identify areas which are going to need a lot of help with. Uh, after the onboarding call, you're going to learn HTML and CSS. That's the starting point. HTML is very simple when you are starting out. CSS is very simple when you're starting out. But as the projects grow and get bigger, you're getting to see a uh, lot of requirements and these ones requires you to go and learn a flexbox for css go and learn things like uh, for javascript go and learn what are generators what are iterators uh, how do how do what is called back hell uh, are you able to, ex to, 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 to to explain the call stack how, how the call stack works these things they're very important so I want to stop on uh, presenting at this point, and uh, I want to point out materials which you can use to get started learning. And uh, I've always told people there's a very good, uh, very good uh, uh, website, and uh, it's called the Fronted Fronted Mentor. So what these people do is they give you some 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 of these things to implement for instance this card you click on it they want you to implement this card 
So this is a challenge. You start the challenge for free. Like you challenge yourself. So all check on fronted mentor if you want to challenge us your skills in coming up with nice UIs. That is one thing which you need. Um front fronted mentor. But this one is going to improve your CSS very, very much. Uh, you see, we have even complete pages. We have a complete landing page. We have cards, the pricing, the, the time tracker. We have the pricing cards. You have the e-commerce product page. Check on this stuff. They are free. Like most of them are free. And these are intermediate. You're going to write the HTML and CSS. So you're going to learn a lot of stuff here. If you want to know a lot of JavaScript too, there's um, you know, another website called Frontend Masters. And there's a specific course which I usually refer people called JavaScript the hard parts. JavaScript the hard parts. I'm not going to tell you this. This one is not free. I'll send it to you on the chat. This one is not free. Why I, I always keep on telling people to learn this? It's, called, it's by Will Sentence. He's a nice tutor. I tell you for free. All the JavaScript which I know, all the concepts I've learned, have been taught by this guy. And you're going to learn things which which people overlook. Thread execution functions, call stack, functions are uh, high order components, high order functions, examples, arrow functions, closures, nested functions, all these. These are the building blocks to React for, for what React is. What, what people don't know about React is what this guy is explaining. The web APIs, how the web APIs work, promises, callback, how to implement all the, you even show you how to implement a class, like the way you, you say class about how to implement a class using functions. This guy is going to teach you a lot of stuff. Please, please, if you can, if you can get this course, you can buy it. I think the uh, pricing is four four k per month, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, monthly is four k, thirty eight dollars. If you cannot buy four that uh, with four thousand. Of course, I know people uh, look for torrents. It's there on torrents. I don't advise you to do that, but you can get it on torrents too. It, it's not the greatest advice because this person has spent so much money and time to come up with a course. Please look for that course. It's I think it's five to six hours long. By the time you are done with the course, you'll be a pro in JavaScript. You'll be speaking JavaScript. Whenever you go JavaScript, it's going to be okay. Who wants to learn on YouTube? I want to show you YouTube, YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, thing where places you can learn. One is called um, uh, Net Ninja. Net Ninja is a JavaScript engineer. Uh, he has got lots of courses, lots of courses. You want to learn Firebase? You want to learn <coughs> React for 2021? I think he has that. He has Go. Uh, he has Material UI. If you want to learn Material UI. He has Flutter, he has React Query, he has HTML and CSS crash course. You want to take this look as soon as you can. He also has modern JavaScript. <clears throat> this one is very good because he'll teach you stuff which you need to know about modern JavaScript to, to do React. So I'm going All to, right then, gang, and welcome I'm going to your first step on send this to you guys. Uh, it's called the Net Ninja. Let me copy the link and trace. It's free. You can always follow him. Net Ninja, very nice. He's teach. You, he'll teach you React, teach you or view. He'll teach you JavaScript and all that stuff. Of course, we have Udemy. Udemy is always there. Uh, you can always. I think Udemy courses are around twelve hundred, uh, where they have an offer. So things you want to check on is starting with this documentation here. Uh, you're going to hear things like Redux. They 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 have their pages. Redux like. They have their pages here. Mm. Want to learn? If you want to learn Redux? They have Redux and they have Redux toolkit. So it's always good to visit the page and see the getting started and stuff. So at this point, I want to take questions and uh, and uh, any type of question, be it front end one, be it uh, be it a. Uh, a CSS or a JavaScript one, so uh, you can feel free. I'll hand over the session to Mary to moderate that. Thank you, Abel, for that presentation. It was quite educative and very detailed to the point. Yeah, so I will open this forum to take questions from the audience. 
Um, okay, if somebody has their hand raised. Oh, oh yeah, that is Brati Pa. Yeah, you can just unmute and ask. Okay. Um. Good afternoon, everyone. Um. Thank you, Abel, for the very informative session. Uh, it was very informative. Uh, I was asking about uh, the general uh, of your dev journey. Uh, how did you manage to know all those languages? How did you go about it? Were you like uh, learning them at once, or were you just specifying it for one time? Yeah. And another question is: uh, Do you offer mentorship? Mm -hmm currently thank you uh, uh thanks uh Brad. so let me start with your first question oh, i hope i've pronounced your name correctly uh i'm sorry if i've not got any right uh so my journey and the languages which i use right now so you see um my story is quite long i think i need to do a session on my story i started developing i started doing development in 20 back in 2013 i was in I think first year or second year. I was in first year, so I just I just got in my initial my first laptop in campus, and then we had this um, we had this uh, boot camp by Safaricom iLab. Uh, they were teaching you using PHP. I was in first year, my kid had not even started knowing what HTML is, is, is all this stuff. So those guys came to our university and they taught us how to do PHP and USSD for Safaricom. And at that point is when I started doing crazy stuff with. With, with programming, I learned a lot. After that session, I went to learn HTML, CSS, learned how to do PHP, created so many websites for people. I, I I remember I developed my first project for a fourth year when I was in a second year first first semester. Complete project for a fourth year, they passed, they they did their creation, they did well. Fast forward, by the time I was clearing university in 2015, I'd learned PHP. C sharp, VB.net, and JavaScript. I had not learned React and any of that stuff. I also I also learned Python and but it was not my major. I was doing game development using Python. I had even done mobile applications using Java. I did so many things when I was in campus, like crazy stuff. I was not sleeping. I was the kind of guy who was working, reading back to back and implementing stuff. So when I got to my first job, I was doing Microsoft stuff doing vb.net and csharp.net and uh, for web and writing lots of uh, queries and database management. When I was doing that job, I I learned React and React Native. It was not the most important decision I did that time because I was not, I, it was, I was not employable. But then I started having interest, React, React Native. Of course, if you know React, you can do React Native. Then uh, when I got my first React job, I started doing React Native concurrently, doing my own small projects. So if I'm doing a Shopee cart for a web application, I do it in a, a mobile app for that using React Native. I I stopped in doing it that way, and then I learned JavaScript. I took the JavaScript hard parts course, uh, which I've shared. And that gave me superpowers, because at that point, I could easily jump from React to Vue. I, that is what actually happened. I started learning Vue.js. It was so simple. I learned Angular. It was so simple because I understood the basics of JavaScript so well that it is so easy to get these concepts. Because when you jump into a, into a library or into a language without the concept, you struggle so much trying to bridge the gap. So that's how I learned and got to go to do all this stuff which I do. I I took some time to build the foundation, and at this point, I think it's the best it's the best thing for you to do. Build the foundation. If you want to do, if you are you want to base your career on JavaScript like I have done right now, please take on that course and live on the JavaScript ecosystem very well. Not don't just stick to React or Vue. Sometimes look at what other people are doing in Angular or Svelte or a new framework. Just just look look at stuff. You find that they are all, almost the same. And the second question, I do offer mentorship, but currently I'm not, but I can offer mentorship to people. I, I just find it hard to find serious people to mentor. Most people are jokers. Uh, but if you are seriously looking for mentorship, I can do that for you. I can help you learn and do stuff. But you have to be, you have to promise that you're going to be there, do stuff, and not, not to sleep on the job. If you can do, if you can make that promise, I can always mentor you. 
but if you're going to to have challenges even with time keeping time and stuff i know we africans we don't keep time but it's very important that you learn you learn you learn these things early enough thank you for the question hope i've answered your question uh, well yes thank you you've answered the question well yes i'll be contacting you thank you cool cool i'll i think mary has my number and my email address she can always share uh, with the community uh just shoot uh, i'm not always on whatsapp so uh you, do, you will find it so hard to get me on whatsapp but on email i am a working email uh, email person so you email me i reply but on whatsapp i forget i even have whatsapp so email is always perfect or oh, linkedin okay thank you abel for that i will share your contact for anyone who needs uh, mentorship um okay so we can take the next question from the audience um i see mary is asking what's the end point of us besides ga gaining the coding skills uh well i believe this is a very uh broad question but just to highlight uh what you're going to benefit out of this boot camp uh beside the coding skills learning how to work on projects um of course you're also going to learn how to do technical writing as lux academy we really campaign and uh we really embrace technical writing you'll also learn how to navigate the evolving tech ecosystem you learn how to ace your interview interviews uh by crack cracking the coding interview question so it is quite the, yeah there's a lot that is installed for you yeah but as abel has mentioned it is uh basically this is up to you depends with the tenacity and the hard work that you're going to put the effort that you're going to put here so um do you have any other question from the audience kindly feel free you can drop so, your question on the chat box yeah, somebody has raised their, 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 their yeah they have the question on the chat oh oh um oh so they're asking if you're going to pick up node um I sorry think, i think, I think mm -hmm. they can ask yeah uh, Milka, um, kindly go ahead and unmute and shoot your question. Hi. Hi, Milka. Yeah, I've written my question, but I can still ask you. Okay, go ahead. We actually have Node.js, Angular, and React. So mm -hmm. what will make you choose one over the other? Uh, Are they the same? Okay 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 uh okay uh yeah. great question milka so node.js is a backend is a backend framework uh it's it's a backend actually they, they not only works on for, for backend so you, that's why you you write your logic uh that's that's more like python for people who are doing python so it helps you write server side code the code you write for node.js works on the server runs on the server so that's that's like powering your React application, your Angular application. On the other hand, React and Angular, they are Angular is a is a framework, React is a library. They are all focused on UI only. So you cannot like handle payments in the UI. You cannot like uh, dispatch orders in the UI. Like all that logic needs to run on a server, and that's where Node comes in. Uh, the only the only the only thing which you can choose over is either React or Angular. And let me tell you why you would want to use Angular and why you want to use React. Mm -hmm. Angular is a full-blown framework by Google. That, what that means is that they have everything inbuilt into Angular. Like, you don't stress about stuff. If it's uh, state management, they have it inbuilt. If it's SEO, they have it inbuilt. If it's uh, client-side or server-side rendered component, they have it inbuilt. All the stuff which we struggle with in React, like installing Redux, installing... Uh, selling like uh, external packages to do SEO, they already have that in built into Angular. And Angular is, I would say Angular is more focused on enterprise applications. And um, so if you are, and it's written in TypeScript. So if you are a fan of writing TypeScript and uh, you want to build big applications and you don't want to stress about configurations and make it decision about packages and all that stuff, 
please choose angular i must say that uh on the on the on the flip side with angular is that we don't have so many jobs to do the angular right now in kenya and outside there because react and view have taken have taken over in the history of open source project react has got the most downloads in the world that means they have so many jobs in react and view and other libraries angular like the jobs you get for angular they are like they are not new projects they are projects which are done a long time ago they just want people to maintain and keep on upgrading the application so if that's if that's something you want to do choose angular for react react is a library it's not a framework and the difference is very big because what React gives you is a very simple API, like a very simple API to implement your UI. What happens is that you have now control of how you want to do your UI. What package do I need to do? Do I need to uh, install? What do I? What logic do I need to write for this stuff? Work? For instance, Angular has got routing by default. Like they have, they have, they they, they have um, a, a router in, in built into their project. In React, we don't have a router. There is no opinionated router. So the router has been has been done by other people out there. It's called React router. We have other routers out there. So you you are, you are making this decision for yourself. Like, do I need React router? Do I need React React location? Like, they have. You have a chance of deciding what to do with the application. React doesn't have all the batteries in. Apart from the simple uh, API, the rest of the stuff it's up to you to to decide, and that's why that 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 is what makes React a very perfect choice for a project, because there are no opinions. You are not going to be restricted into working or implementing stuff in a way. You can alter, change, do other stuff which you want to do. So that's that's the power of React. It's very like you are you are given superpowers. Just do what you want to do with them. Hopefully that is clear, Milka. Sam Kashoki uh, has shared some resources. Sam is a very good React engineer. Uh, I've always requested me to reach out to Sam and get Sam to talk about stuff. Uh, Sam is quite uh, quite, quite the, 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 the developer, so you should you should always look forward to talking to Sam. Okay, thanks, Abel, for that. Um, so we'll have Sam Kasioki during our next session. If we can actually say hi to the audience, Sam, um, if you're in a position to say a word, kindly unmute. <laughs> ah, seems, okay. mm -hmm. seems, seems, uh, seems, uh, he's not there. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll share your number with Sam. We'll reach out to you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so um, maybe if I can, if I can shoot my question, since we were talking about project-based learning. So um, Abel, kindly, can you take us through uh, the walkthrough process of how you build your own applications from scratch? How do you ensure that you've defined state as early as possible? How do you ensure that you do not duplicate logic? Yeah, kindly, can you walk us through the process? Yeah, I'm going to take the simple route, which everybody is going to be taking in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to start with how I create it. And I use a tool called React, create React app. It's done by React team, this one. So this one helps you to set up a, a startup project, like a startup project with all the stuff to help you start working on your project. So I'll always do this, uh, npx create React app and then my app name. So let's say I'm working on a blog, and then from that point, uh, I make decisions on a folder structure, like where do I put on my pages? So I, I've said we have two types of components, like container components and presentational components. Container components, I tend to view them as a complete page, like a complete page you can visit. Like there's no doubt that if this container component is homepage, there is a homepage page for that. And then I have presentational components which are just like, uh, they're just showing, uh, they're just a display components, like an input, a button, a slider. They are, they, they are, not, they are not pages, they are just components I need to, 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 I need to, to use in a container uh, project. So I structure, I make vision of what container components I'm going to make and where I'm going to store them and the presentational components. I also come up with a way of storing 
of 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 handling my utilities because your, your project will always need some some utilities here and there so afford of utilities it's always going to be there and then um i'm a fan of context api so i will not install redux i start coming up with a with a form of uh, context uh, context folder structure where i'll store my context my reducer and, and actions and then of course store, store images in an assets directory and then um, start working on stuff so i uh, so let's say i'm working on on a home page for lux academy or for ladies of lux so the first thing i'll create a page i'll set up the react router and then um, i'll set up style components i'll set up the global style the styles which are globally available and uh, they're, not, they're not going to change for instance the the styling for the body and the primary colors and all all the theme all the theme stuff i'm going to set up them using style component then uh, i start working on the page and then a couple of a couple of uh, of uh, minutes or hours down down the line working on the component i realize that i there is a component which is being duplicated so much like the card component a card showing the resources which we have for lux academy so I'll, I'll extract that card component into the presentational components folder and come up with a with a reusable the reusable uh, cards component which you can use in any other context and um to avoid code reuse that is one thing which i do come up with components which are going to be used over and over what well, other thing is i i tend to write a lot of custom books so if let's say i'm going to be calling an api every time every time i'm going to be calling an api i'll abstract them in that 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 uh, logic in the use api hook is going to take in the 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 let's say it's going to take in the route and the parameters and all that stuff they are going to handle that for me so i'll come up with things which are repetitive like calling an api uh uh what is i it's repetitive like um applying some theme themes themes or setting like um uh, like storing data to the local storage something which you keep on doing over and over you just subtract it you, you create a custom hook if you're working on a class component i'll come up with something called high order components and high order components are be say simply components which take on components as a uh, components and properties as their input they give them superpowers and then they return another component so for instance if i'm working on redux redux they have a high order component you can also come up with a high order component uh, to avoid repeating your data uh, to, avoid, to avoid repeating your your code there is so much you can do uh, to creating a React project. The easiest way, uh, the easiest way uh, is to is to first make the decision on the folder structure. It's very important. And uh, while you're working on a project, keep your eye on things which are which are repeating over and over, including CSS. If you, have, if you find yourself repeating the same CSS styles over and over. It's time to, to to push that in into the global CSS styles you, so that you, you don't you don't keep on repeating that. Um, I think in the, in a in a different session we can we can talk about that the rights and the wrongs because I've shown you how to do it in Create React app. There are other ways to do this. You can always come up with your own with your own uh, web pack config and uh, set up the project completely so let me share uh, let me share that um the create react app is easy, easy place to start so that's how i do it i i'm not sure whether i've answered that completely but yeah that's how i i do it right now that's the simplest way to do it uh, thank you. Yes, you have answered that. And yeah, for sure, we'll have another session on the do's and the don'ts while creating a project. Yeah, uh, and I think I think that's something which you can give some to talk about. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, it, it, it will, it will have more insights on, on it. Oh, okay, okay. We'll plan, we'll organize that. Cool. Okay, so... There's a question on the chat. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So when creating your folder structure, should you separate your JSX files from JS files? What do you mean by JS files? Like things which are not UI? 
um, okay, I think she means the extension, the dot .js, sex extension in the dot .js. Um, uh, I, I don't think there's any need for that because a dot .js component will always run and a dot .jsx component will always work. So it's just, you, you just decide on what you, what you want to do. You can do dot .js or dot .jsx. They are almost the same. But if you are just writing JavaScript, JavaScript code, which is not a UI uh, component, you can put them in a separate folder. For instance, a utility function, let's say validate.js. Validate.js is not a UI component. It's a logic for validation. You can put it in a separate folder. But if validate.js is a component, you don't need to separate that. Okay, Valerie, I hope that was answered. Um, Taking more questions. Yes, kindly ask, ask anything. This is the time to shoot your shots. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so meanwhile, as we wait uh, for your questions, um, probably if Masila, you could allow me, I think I'll hand over the session to Esther. Esther is on the call. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah, she's part, yeah, she's part of the college team of Microsoft Evolve. And, this, and since this bootcamp is a partnership, I'll hand over the session to her and then we can now get back to the Q&A session. Um, Esther, you can pick it up. Yeah, hi. Hi, hi, Mary. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. You're well? Yes, you're holding up fine. Yes, you're holding up fine. Uh, all right, I asked that just to make sure you can hear me well. You can hear me clearly. Yes, you're audible enough. Yes, you're audible enough. All right, all right. Thank you. No. Yeah, though um, my voice so hi being, guys. Yeah, though my voice, voice is being reflected. Sorry? Um my voice is being reflected. Um, my voice is being reflected. I didn't get that. Um there's echo. Very come uh, there's echo. Oh, there's an echo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do I now is it better um yeah better yeah okay all right so i think i'll just take two minutes um just to say um hi guys and welcome to this session um thank you abel so much for um uh, facilitating this uh, it was really educative informative and really awesome looking forward to have the hands-on sessions um, with you probably and the rest of us because who have been selected for the team. Um, thank you, Mary, for moderating these sessions. It was, um, the flow was really good. Um, yeah, I hope that those who have joined us for the sessions will uh, keep at it. Uh, please try and be consistent in joining the sessions. That's the only way you will um, be able to move from step A to step B in terms of your um, career. Um, we have provided an email. Once you signed up, there was an email sent to you. So that's where you'll be getting the link to our sessions, um, uh, the, the link to our sessions, as well as there's a, there's a WhatsApp group. That's where much of the communications will be happening. Um, so, Kindly, if you haven't joined the WhatsApp group, um, we ask that you may join so that it's a lot easier. And yeah, uh, I had one person asking if they can get mentorship. I think that is the best question so far I have had. Um, if you want to progress from one step to another, you always want someone you look up to, someone to guide you, someone to direct you. So for those of us who are here and you have that chance, please grab it, make sure you get uh, two cents from somebody who's ahead of you and yeah looking forward to an awesome five weeks with you guys um mary i don't think i have much to say just saying thank you even uh from the microsoft team um we hope that we can
cooperate with you guys and create an awesome experience. So thank you. Thank you so much, Abel. I really, really appreciate. Thank so you. Mary, back to you. Yeah, um, yes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Esther, for highlighting the most important uh, points. Uh, we believe that you're going to work together and we are going to learn as a community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll get back to the Q&A session. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, maybe as we wait for more questions from the audience, since we still have some time, um, um, Abel, which is your favorite um, um, CSS framework? Do you like working with CSS frameworks or you, do you just prefer using uh, CSS? Probably you can share that fun fact with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd be glad to answer that. A long time ago, I used to love and try to use CSS frameworks uh, until designers decided to create their own designs, which which are very, very complicated to implement using uh, a UI frame, a, a CSS framework like Bootstrap or any other stuff. But I've grown, grown fond of one. And because I mostly work with dashboard on dashboards, um, there is one called Ant Design. It's very, 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 very good for coming up with dashboards. Apart from that, I love to write raw CSS without involving any other near the CSS library. That way I get enough in, enough power to tweak the UI with no opinions. Because the moment you, let's say the designer gives you something which is not, which is not does not look like material UI. You know how material UI looks like? Like it's paper, it's paper-like, it's just material UI. But then the designer gives you something which is not material-like. You are going to struggle so much to make material UI look like what the designer is looking for. So instead of going through all that, uh, also and uh, to, to to make it look the way the designer wants just write css and uh and uh if need be if need be and the designer has recommended one you can always use but i love writing css if i if i can't write CSS, i will always look for something which works well but and design is good and design is very nice Oh, okay, Th thanks for that. I know it can get pretty difficult when there's a Figma design that is very, you know, complicated to change that to code. So um, how do you get to work around that? How do you get to tell a designer that, you know, th this feature, this feature is not supposed to be here. It can be implemented in this other way. Uh, yeah. what, one, what, one thing which, which which you need to talk about with your designer is the designer needs to be able to implement what they are telling you to implement first. <laughs> so if they can't, that means you can't too. So the the designs which which these people are coming, you, you just talk to them like make it usable enough so that I won't spend ninety percent of my time just styling stuff. Uh, so that's 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 the approach which, which I usually have with my designer. Uh, just work on stuff which, which you as a developer you can also work on. Uh, of course, we have completed designs and uh, we try to, of course, once you have decided we are going to use, let's say, Ant Design or Machine, right? Or, or we are going to write CSS, we try to look at how much JavaScript is required to power that UI and how much is required to power that UI. If we find that it's a lot of work to make that specific UI item look the way they want, we change, we change the design to something a little bit, a little bit easy to implement and still meets the goal. So that's how we deal with, 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 with figure because the designs are not written on rock. And most designers tend to think that their designs are written on rock and they cannot be edited. It's a wrong, it's, 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 a, it's wrong advice. Like, uh, you should be able, the same way I can change my code, you should, you should be able to change your design. So that's how we usually have a discussion. What is right? What is wrong? what we can implement, what we can't, what is very important for the, for the design to have, uh, and and so forth. So that is that is how we, we do it, com deal with complicated uh, design. Always talk to the designer, tell them, can you implement this? No, it's going to take some time for me to, to implement. 
Oh, okay. That's amazing. So it will be a two-way street. Yeah, yeah. You are, okay. you are, you are, you are, you are all trying to build a product, right? Yes. You are the machinery. They are the guideline. Uh, the, it's 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 supposed to complement. Supposed to complement each other. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Uh, a question related to that. Someone is asking, "What's your say about Figma and Miro?" Uh, mm, I think Figma wins every uh, every other day because we have we have we have enough in, enough uh, documentation and tutorials on that. Uh, but if, 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 if you're not going to do, if, if you're not going to uh, to be working directly uh, on these products, you are, you are just a consumer, you should, you should not be restrict, restricted to any of them, like given any you should be able to use. But I, I think that Figma has got the right CSS uh, styling when you are trying to implement a design uh, better than Miro. I have not. I have only worked on one project with Miro, but it was an interview thing. Uh, I I end up. Uh, after, you see, when you copy the CSS from Figma, it always works the way it is. In the in, but for Miro, I had to change a little bit of stuff uh, to make it to work. But Figma all day, any day. Of course, we have Adobe XD. Adobe XD is also nice. The good thing about Adobe XD is that you can it's paid and there is a free free version. But to upload the designs, uh, you uh, you need to pay. But it is one very nice tool. It's the easiest to get started with. Okay. Um, I believe that was well answered. Um, so there's another interesting question about um, what advice can you give about consistency? Yeah, so um, I know it's very normal for you to feel like you don't want to continue, and uh, at that point, don't don't stop, don't stop. And staying consistent in uh, in writing UI uh, components and writing React or JavaScript or any any field requires you to have some form of commitment, uh, and to avoid losing losing sight of what you are building always take care of yourself like whoa, don't don't just hum on the keyboard eight hours a day straight you are going to get tired and you're going to feel like like it's not the thing which you want to do the 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 way i usually do it is uh i know do, i don't work for more than five hours on the same thing so like if i'm working on this project i would want to switch context and work on something else which is a little bit intuitive uh, to break to, to to break the burnout and to to make to make sure that I don't I don't lose focus. Um, if you are feel if you feel like you want to stop, always talk to somebody about it. There, there could be some some something else which 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 makes you want to stop entirely, not just not just you stopping uh, at that point. Uh, always talk to somebody about it uh, because I believe. One thing which will make you want to stop is the kind of bugs uh, or the kind of UI components which you are building. Some uh, some get complicated and feel like uh, I, I can't continue working. If this, if this is how people work, I don't want to be working on this. I'm, I want to change. I want to start doing backend. I want I want to stop and um, and work on UI on UX. Start working on Figma or start doing PM uh, project management. Uh, Stay focused. Stay, stay, stay focused. Talk to somebody. Uh, if uh, work on a uh, on a personal project which which makes you excited enough, like I I, I tend to have a, a pet project which I've not even exposed to anyone. I have I've been working on a chat widget, uh, the pop up chat widget. I love it. I challenge myself. It's something which I love to work on, and that's what that's that is one way to keep consistent. Like always work on something which is personal to you, which you can't stop working on. Like it gives you joy. For instance, if you have an online shop, let's say you sell you sell clothes or you sell books, you can start working on, on an e-commerce platform because it, that is something which gives you joy. Uh, you will not lose sight. Hopefully that has been answered well. Yes, that was quite an interesting answer.
and the fact that you've actually highlighted that it's good to work on projects that excite you because i believe that the moment you start working on such kind of projects you, you'll always uphold consistency yeah um, yeah and and and, and when, even when you are looking for jobs let's say don't just look for jobs aimlessly for instance i love the work i do you know i love the work i do we have impacted so many people it gives me joy every day i walk into that I, I open my laptop and start working because i know what i'm working on is going to help somebody who has got a mental problem they are stressed they are depressed they have covid they are they they, they, they have been uh, stigmatized i know somebody's going to benefit so much and that keeps me going so even when you're looking for jobs look for jobs which are projects also which 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 excite you too for instance if you are if you love working on in in the medical space look for medical projects which have react like i know of a company which is looking for react developers to build their medical information system it's going to give you lots of joy if you like working on on, on things to do with farming we have so many guys who are working on on farming projects like we have m farm uh we have masoko like we have the one for trigger foods which is alongside the riverside like these are projects which 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 which, which keep you going but if you like what if you are dj and you the project you are working on is is meant is, is for insurance or it's a medical project you are basically working to finish the work you're not enjoying look for something which keeps you keeps you going <laughs> wow Th thanks masila for reminding us that um okay so we are still taking more questions from the audience before we wrap up the session any more questions from the audience okay someone is asking oh when the classes will start the classes will start um as from next week on tuesday though the boot camp will precisely begin on monday this coming monday so on monday you'll start receiving learning resources and yeah that's when the boot camp will commence um do you have any other questions okay okay so we are just about to close uh, the session i hope you have had an you know exciting learning experience as i have had this was quite amazing i have learned a lot and uh, maybe before we close the session um masila can share his two cents before we call it a day yeah yeah so my two cents so i've realized that uh, this call uh as good uh the, the ratio of ladies to men is quite high that means this program is geared to ladies and um i feel so good uh, seeing ladies pushing stuff kicking us doing great stuff out there and this is your opportunity to to, to be world class so uh, going to that boot camp kick us be the best you can be learn ask questions there is nothing wrong with asking questions just ask a lot of questions that is how you unblock yourself that's how you become world class and when you get to work for somebody out there somebody is going to give you some piece of work to work paid or not paid give it your best like give it your best work like it's your own project and you're going to be rewarded like we cannot always start companies we cannot always be entrepreneurs we can all we can we 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 fit somewhere so if you are going to work for somebody give it your best learn never stop learning react javascript is something which the learning never ends so once you feel like you have learned enough that's a point to start learning afresh amazing and probably in relation to that someone has asked um was there any point in uh, in time in your journey that you had to deal with self doubt if so how did you deal with it uh yeah self doubt yeah even people have done software engineering for so long we people tend to have self doubt and uh, yes i did i have i have felt myself not sufficient enough a couple of times and uh one thing i try to look at is i try to look at uh, back couple of years or couple of months when i was working on things which i did not know and i still ended up acing them like i kicked 
the ass out of those things. I excelled. And th- at this point, I feel like I'm not sufficient enough. I look back at those moments and realize the journey has been too long. As it, 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 I've come far and uh, the journey cannot stop at this point. And I ask for help. And um, there's a guy, a friend of mine who, who does Nod and Golang. We have been friends for over 10 years. He's the kind of person who, who, who I talk to about this stuff. Like when you feel like I'm not sufficient enough, I talk to him. Then we have a we have a session. We talk about all the stuff which we've been able to achieve. We talk about possible solutions to stuff, and we grow together. Any time you feel like you are you you are doubting yourself, remember you how far you have come. Like you could have stopped three months ago, but you haven't. At this point, don't don't stop. So that's how I deal with self doubt. At this point, I at this point I feel like I'm getting a little bit confident, not because I am the best. It's because I've learned that I'm not I'm not I don't know everything. There are things which will tell me. Even a junior engineer will tell me I don't know. And the thing which keeps me going is I want to know. Okay, now this I don't know. So what is what is this stuff? And as, as you're growing your career, you're going to experience moments where uh, there are things which you don't know completely and people expect you to know them. It's good not to know. It's good to ask. Uh, just ask. Just be open enough. Tell this person or these people, Yo, you know what? I don't know about GraphQL, but you can tell me. Within that means I'll be fine. And that's how you, you grow. You overcome self-doubt. So ask. Ask for help. Talk to people who are, who are compassionate. People who are going to listen to you and uh, just let listen to you and give you advice. You're, you're going to be fine. It's very common in tech to have self-doubt. It's very common. You cannot avoid it. It's going to happen. I promise you, it's going to happen. And there's no point you should feel like you, are, you, you know everything. Because when you feel like you know everything is when you don't know everything. Things, are, things happen when you are asleep, when you wake up, things have changed. So I, I, I believe I've, I, I've, shared, I, I've shared enough of personal experience and how I've, I've uh, overcome self-doubt it's going to happen to you so uh, be ready and have people you can talk to just wow i'm still in awe that was quite an amazing response the fact that you've reminded us that we are supposed to you know like look back at the journey in terms of how far we have come and how far we are going it's good to you know get those two cents from a senior engineer who has been in the field for quite some time. Thank you, Abel. <laughs> You're welcome, and it's nice talking to you guys. I'm going to drop off. I have another event at Hyab. If you can oh, come okay. to Hyab, you can. You will, you will find me there uh, uh, up to around 8 p.m. We have an event for, for Atlassian, so you can always visit and mm-hmm. have our physical chat. Maybe you get to see me. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, we can we, we can even schedule for for mentorship and stuff okay thanks for extending the invitation so guys if you can actually manage to go to ihub masila is there so yeah feel free so others i'd like to thank everyone thank you for attending this session considering you know today's on a saturday so it's a weekend but you've still created time to attend this session and that is quite motivating and abel masila it's, it's always amazing to have you on board. Thank you for supporting this community and thank you for bringing impact. We feel it each and every day, each and every time. Yeah, thank so, you, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um. So we are looking forward to have you guys join the board as we continue, uh, I mean, as we start this front end development bootcamp and we are looking forward to move together yeah so that's it for my end we've come to the end of the session if you have any questions if you need any clarity reach out you can always reach out to me you can always uh follow us on twitter at ladies of lux at microsoft evolve we also have our whatsapp group so kindly if you have any question please ask yeah so that's it for me thank you so much abel and thank you onto the audience thank you for attending this session bye bye